Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Amori. So, Basil's gone missing, so we need to go to the park and find him. Luckily, if you go here, it tells you exactly where he is, so. He was just hanging out over here last time we saw him, right? Yeah. Would he not talk to us? Uh, yeah, he was basically just hanging around. <laughs> Our old hangout Through the spot. trees. Oh, no. The entrance should be somewhere around here. This is a weird-ass music track going on right now. Oh, god damn it, Aubrey. You see, I know where this shit is going, so... It <laughs> Your secret hangout spot. They're being bullies. <laughs> You're not supposed to like them, blah de blah, blah blah Your secret hangout spot? This is our secret hangout spot. Aubrey, come on. Guys, can't you share? No. How did you even find this place? By... By following the screams. Okay, so... <sighs> Aubrey just took her new group of friends to the their old hangout spot? That's yeah, basically. weirdly sentimental in a backwards way. And I guess maybe she's embarrassed at being caught out on that because she's not saying anything. Jesus. No, oh, six on two. This, this, this seems fair. Yeah, so you're going to lose this unless you have one very specific thing. And that specific thing being the pe pepper spray, right? Yep. Does losing the fight or winning the fight affect much? No. You don't never need to win a fight in the real world to progress a story. You oh, get okay. You can sometimes get like different um different reactions, but that's about it. Um, like in the the first fight with with Aubrey. You can slash her with a knife, and that causes that, and she gets injured and it runs away. Or you can just have the knife on you, and she'll see the knife and sort of peace out. You know. Yeah, so you can't use the pepper spray on them and instantly win the fight. So, uh, why didn't you? Because I'm saving it for later. Oh, you only get one use of it. Yep. Yeah, drop the tough guy act, Aubrey. <laughs> Y'all know you're a sweetheart down down underneath. Well, more than that, she wouldn't be hanging out with half of these clowns if she were really a tough guy person. I mean, yeah, they're kind of nerds. <laughs> like, who has a pompadour in the year anything past the fifties? <laughs> I mean, like the manliest man in this group walks around with a pocket full of candy, so. And just the Maverick being here takes, like, 90% of the group's cool factor away. Oh, so she's just... What? Why do you guys keep coming... Well, you keep bullying Basil. What do you expect? Oh, the the back away tells me a lot, actually. Oh, no. I know this scene. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> it's a parallel. To what? We'll have to find out. 
the where were you when Mari died? I'm a I'm her fucking brother, <laughs> uh, dude. Like, what do you where do you think I was? It's like, so this is a, a frustrating thing about situations like this in the real world where. And I, I get it. It's not necessarily, it doesn't necessarily make her a bad. Oh, this is trippy. Um, this is just like a real thing about trauma is that like. When you get absorbed into it, you can sometimes think, oh. These other people did nothing. It's like, yeah, it's because they also were dealing with that. You know, like it's not you're not the only one who was affected by this. There's another layer to it, unfortunately. Um, what Aubrey just did is her basically doing the same thing that another character in the area just did. I'm imagining Mari drowned because we're chasing her right now in the in the water down the stairs. Not exactly. I mean, uh, you're not you're not far wrong. No. No, I'm only partially correct. My literary analysis is flawed. <laughs> the situation is different in several ways, but it's also very, very similar. Man, the symbolism on the knife is bizarre. Oh, God. In fact, the only difference between this situation and the situation in which Mari died is that there was a hero to save the day. Something drags you down. It's time for one of these again. It's easy to calm down while you're drowning. And you have to do calming down in order yeah. to... Can you fail these fights in the real world? No. They'll okay. just not do anything until you do what you're supposed to do. Okay. Don't be afraid. I bring you love. Bring this love. Kill it. <laughs> so, okay. We'll have another, uh, another pseudo fight with something. I think it's supposed to be seaweed. Um... It's pretty dark, so unfortunately you can't really see the detail. Yeah. Something is kind of just an ever-shifting sort of manifestation of the trauma. But, you know. The, um... The unfortunate fact, however, of Sunny's real-world situation is that there isn't a whole lot of actual time to, like, wrestle down your past trauma. He's only got two days left. No, I mean more in the fact that he isn't, that he's drowning. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so the situation that Aubrey accidentally caused was that she shoved Basil into the lake and then Amori had to fall, had to jump in after him, but then Amori's trauma sort of stopped him from really doing anything. So Aubrey almost got two people killed. If it hadn't been for our friend here, Aubrey, da, da, da. Aubrey would have done the same thing. And that's funny. It's irony. It is Get irony. It? It's also why I figure that Aubrey would really understand when the truth comes out. But, you know, we never find out how that all goes. So... You never find out... Oh, yeah, because you're just gone. Well, you'll see what I mean. Anyway, so, like... Oh, you can't go back and talk to her? Okay. Nope. We're a little too mad at Aubrey to talk to her right now. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that she's... I like how you get to see past the edge of the trees in that camera shot, and all you see is open sky, as if, it, as if there's just a cliff two feet north. <laughs> I 
Why does he smell like disgusting pond water? It's a long story, man. <laughs> well, it's not a very long story, actually. We could sum it up in two second in two sentences. Um, Aubrey's a bully. She pushed him. And you know, if someone just told the adults that, that would solve this problem real quick, wouldn't it? If, from my childhood experiences with bullying, getting invo adults involved, unfortunately, almost always has the opposite effect that you want. Oh, I mean um, more in the sense that when you shove someone into a lake and they almost die, that crosses the line from bullying to assault. Yeah, but I also get the feeling that they want to make up. So, like, getting her potentially as far as, like, at at best in deep shit with her parents and at worst in the juvenile detention system is not what they want. You I don't. Know, I don't think uh, they're. I don't think these three are like thinking rationally in terms of what they want at this moment. Oh, of course not. Because a, they're fourteen, and b, it's a traumatic situation. Yeah, my point is, it's it's kind of impressive that they that they didn't end up spilling the beans, intentionally or otherwise. Yeah. How well adjusted is Hero? Uh, Hero is. Probably the only really well-adjusted one. <laughs> because he's, like, the college guy. He's got it together, you know? Yeah. And he still obviously misses Mari a ton and has issues with that, but he's handling yeah. things about as well as he can now. Yeah. It also probably helps that he was older when it happened, too. Kel is almost handling it well, but he's a bit desperate in certain in certain areas. A bit... Well, it's there, there, a... It, there's a bit of excess. There's a bit of denial when when they can't really reconnect with each other. You know. I feel like also part of it does like because another trauma is losing someone else too. Like because yeah. if Sunny leaves, that's almost like losing another person. You know, which yeah. he probably also doesn't want. So that probably adds to the emotional state of the whole thing. This friend. This friend group is just a walking mass of complexes with Hero hovering awkwardly on the on the outside as the only one who has it, like, together. Isn't this one of the assholes that, that tried to beat us up? Why are yeah. we fighting Pompadour with a pet rock? What? Because he has a pet rock. Wait, are these Tamagotchis? Yes. yes. They're pet rocks. Because pets rock. A. Do okay. you win if you always choose rock? Good old rock. Nothing beats that. Poor, predictable Bart. <laughs> Saucy K! No! Oh, there's, there is a special delicious irony in you calling someone else a bully. I'm, I'm just confused why this guy just punched us in the stomach and is now like, hey, do you want to do a Pokemon battle? I brought my link cable and everything. <laughs> Uh, gotta love RPG characters who are always willing to run in single file behind their designated leader. Yep. Never have a friend group leader in a in a teenage uh, world. It never works out. Trust me. They always have way more episodes than you, and you're relegated to comic relief. It just it sucks. Don't ever do it. Of course, instead of the leader being the you know emotionally put together college kid it's 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 this emotionally stunted child hey man sometimes you just know when you're the npc in someone else's story all right <laughs> oh no it's happening again it's it's leaking even harder now i do appreciate the attempts at detail this game does despite intentionally having a very si simplistic art style um like with the the stains on the the floor where the pipes had burst previously <laughs> like that's that's something that i appreciate i just want to know why the fuck he has like exposed plumbing in his living room listen times are tough housing's expensive you take what you can get okay there's That's no... Basil's house, right? No, it's not. Oh. 
You know, it's fucking funny how few RPGs actually, like, let you knock on doors to ask permission to go in, to go inside. It's like, they either skew on the side of JRPGs, which is let you walk freely in and out of people's houses, or they skew on the side of Western RPGs, where entering an NPC's house is, 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 is... is thievery <laughs> like by you know, default I gotta, I gotta imagine it must be hard being a jrpg uh main character when you're a vampire you can't break into people's houses and take all their free stuff Ma gotta make the early game way harder you know, you know it would be funny if the elder scrolls actually took that into account but it never does when you become a vampire can you unbecome a vampire? Oh yeah, there's usually a long, complicated, and incredibly like convoluted quest to seek out a cure. Um, it's fun. It's also not fun. Like, because I'm assuming <laughs> that if you become a vampire in the Elder Scrolls, uh, it comes with all the same drawbacks. Like, if you go out in daytime, you would burn up. Yeah. And if you order garlic bread, you die. It's a little it's it's a little more complicated than that in Oblivion, but not by much. Uh, based on how recently you fed, you can survive in sunlight, maybe, or you'll take small amounts of damage, or you'll take a lot of damage. Um, and feeding also keeps you unrecognizable as a vampire. It makes you look more human. So, uh, but you also have to find people and kill them. Um, and people stay dead. Like NPCs stay dead in Elder Scrolls. Right? I think it's possible to feed off of NPCs without killing them. But oh, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, do they do like the vampires can't cross water thing? Like, I feel like that would make a lot, like especially something like Skyrim, really hard. I don't cause... think so. But it's been a while since. I actually bothered with the vampirism in, in, in Oblivion. Elder Scrolls vampirism is both very cool and very undercooked. So, um, a lot of the times it's just an, inc an inconvenience. Like, if you become a vampire in Morrowind, there's supposed to be, like, clan quest lines and stuff, but most of it was never finished, and the net result is that NPCs just won't talk to you, so you can't oh. actually, so that you can't, so you can't actually progress quests. <laughs> um... <laughs> So, you don't really want to stay a vampire. <laughs> oh, I feel bad for the Maverick now, just seeing all the religious crap. Oh, uh, no. Yeah, a lot uh, of religious crap. His, his family is just very weird. <laughs> I'm getting some heavy team... Uh, what's the t what's the team in, in Scarlet and Violet? Uh, Star. Yeah, Team Star, where they're where they're a bunch of bullies, but when you find out more about them, it turns out that they're just that they're actually like striking back against something, you know. Man, I wish that they like I just wish Pokemon would commit to fully developing characters. You know, it's I I get why it happens because oh uh, we need to have different. We have to showcase different types, so we you have to have different trainers specialize in different types. Okay, I get it, but it's still every one of the the Team Star characters just felt really undercooked, unfortunately. So it's like, in the way it was written, where it's just like, oh, the old principal did a bunch of bad things, so we're not going to change the school structure at all because the new principal's good now, and it it ah uh, man. Scarlet and Violet's just frustrating for me because it's like 80% of the way to being among the best Pokemon games and it just flubs up a bunch of stu important stuff in that well, other 20%. Well, the, the, the fact that you you, you kind of misinterpreted it there kind of speaks to how poorly conveyed it is, but the idea is that the old principal and the old school administration turned a blind eye toward, bu toward bullying, so Team Star was formed to, to clap back against the bullies. But they, yeah. but because because of all the confrontations, they themselves, well, they they managed to drive the bullies from the school rather viciously. But um, because of the way that all went down, they themselves were misidentified as bullies, um, and the new administration that came in, uh, basically the entire team star storyline is the new principal trying to figure out what the hell just what the hell happened with that group and why. So. What are you talking about? He's a completely different character. See, look, his hair's different. <laughs> uh. It's more just, uh, I I wish that Pokemon would 
allow for characters to be more fleshed out and they just don't yeah uh, give them more time to breathe you know flesh them flesh them out a little bit more with more detail but yeah uh, it's it's hard to it's all it's hard to do that in an open world game i'm gonna say so it, it is which is why i wish that at the very least we got to see more of the three friends but they're all like until the very end segregated on their own little paths yeah uh are we supposed to go back to Kel and Hero's house in order to actually progress the story? Yes. Okay. It seems kind of it seems kind of funny. Like the real world sections are a lot easier, it seems, to just go from point to point and rush through the main quest. Yeah, basically. But there's lots of, lots of little side things you can do if you want. So it's it's e interesting though, because in many of these uh, kinds of games, if you want the quote unquote best ending, that usually requires the most like gameplay skill. Like you have to do the hardest challenges in order to get the best ending most of the time. Um, whereas it looks like in this game, I mean, granted, there might be like a a final dungeon at the end that you only get on the good ending in this. But it seems like you're doing less RPG gameplay at all, and it's more just interactive story bits, which is not it's not that's not inherently a bad thing. It's just different from what you will normally see in many of these kinds of mm, games. Where, yeah, like, you have to do an extra side quest or beat a hard boss in order to get the good ending normally. And here it's just you have to choose to not. You have to choose to step away from the RPG bits and do these bits instead. Yeah. Although I I don't think I don't think there's um there's anything necessarily wrong with doing the the RPG route as well because it seems like there are multiple neutral endings from what I've from what I've seen. Oh okay. There are other endings that you can get by doing the fantasy world route. Oh okay. Okay. So What coffee? Yeah, we gave the flash fashionable mom a pot of coffee, and she's letting us use it. Oh. Because as we all know, giving coffee to 12-year-olds always works out great. Um, the only thing it managed to do for me, to be honest, is to make me hate coffee, but... Yeah, I just don't, I just don't like the taste of coffee, um, and so I instead buy other expensive things to make up for the fact that I'm not spending $5 a day on coffee. <laughs> Actually, it's probably more like eight. Now, hold on. Uh, geez. Uh, I mean, depends on what you're getting, I guess. I mean, I get my caffeine from energy drinks mostly, but that's more expensive than coffee, so I'm not exactly winning there, am I? 